So my name is Ed Dudley. I am the founder and chief connections officer for an organization called We Are Connected. We Are Connected's goal is simple, is bringing people together to build genuine and meaningful relationships. And I don't care whether you're in the States, South Africa, England, we just wanna bring people together to come. Because if you look at our society as a whole, it seems like we've drifted apart and our goal is to try to bring people together to form great relationships. Another thing I do is I am a co-founder of a nonprofit here stateside that is called Shining Light and Darkness that focuses on sexual assault and domestic violence. And our goal is to see an end in gender-based violence across the globe. From my vantage point, it's, it's a world problem. It's not just a, a local problem or stateside problem from where I am in the States. It's a world problem. And as we look out there in our environment, gender-based violence is uh, permeated in every you know, part of our society. I don't care whether you're considered low income, high income, there is gender-based violence all over the place. And you know, as I stated earlier, it's really going to take men, uh, men in power, men and just in general to take a stand. Um, because if you think about it, you know, we we have mothers, we have sisters. We have daughters, we have wives, we have family members and close friends that sometimes haven't even shared our story about the gender-based violence that they've gone through, but everybody has a story. And you know, when we start telling our stories and when we are standing up and speaking out about this issue that's permeating our society, only then will we start to see the meaningful change that um, we're looking for. If we go back in, in time, it's always been men that have the perceived power. Um, whether it's, uh, it's, it's physical power or whether it's uh, financial power, uh, men have traditionally been the ones that have per perpetrated this crime. And if you look at, you know, I, I sit back and I look at movies that have perpetrated some form of gender-based violence and it's become acceptable in our society. So our young men start seeing it, start seeing that it's basically acceptable based on what they're hearing in the radio and what they're seeing on TV, but it's not. Um, and I think, like I said earlier, it's really gonna take the men to come together and um, make this meaningful change that we need to see in our society. We as men should be protectors of our women and children, not predators. Children, well, let's start with children. Children are very vulnerable. They're, they're very uh, open. Um, to you know, a lot of things that ha that happen. There is a, a a documentary stateside called Black and Missing that talks about how the children are just being abused and end up coming up missing and in the sex slavery and things like that. Women tend tend, and not always the case, have tended to be vulnerable from men's attacks. You know, I've I've done some research on what's happening in India. Um, in that area, it is, it's a huge problem there, um, where it's sometimes it's not just one man, it's multiple men perpetrating these, these crimes. Um, but society over time, you know, has said, you know, women have been the weaker sex, which we show that it's not the case as always. Um, but it's just something that's been perpetrated over time. Um, sometimes women have been a little too trusting to individuals and men have taken advantage of, of them and children. Every woman is different. Um, I was reading something earlier this week as I was doing some research. It says sometimes it's gonna take a woman six times before she finally leaves her abuser. Um, and sometimes it's social. Um, sometimes it's um, she's scared, frightened, um, sometimes it's financial. Um, you know, we don't talk about financial abuse a, much, a lot. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're scared to that no one will believe them. Sometimes it's fear that this individual has threatened not only their lives, but a loved one. Maybe it's a child. Maybe it's a parent or a sibling. I've, I've read stories like that and I've seen things like this. So if you leave me, I'm going to kill all of, all of your family. So they stay in that situation instead of seeking help. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a rough subject. Um, and my heart goes out to a lot of women that have endured it and are enduring it right now. But I think when we come together to really educate um, not only, you know, men and women, um, but our children at an early age that this is not okay, to speak out early 
I think we'll start seeing some change in mindsets um, from, a, from a lot of the men and the women. We don't hold each other accountable. Um, men in power don't hold men, other men in power um, accountable. We really have to stand up and speak out. We have to be on the front lines. You know, like I said earlier about we're supposed to be the protector of our women, we should be on the front lines of this issue. We should be not only marching with them, but we should be marching in front of them saying that we're not gonna allow this anymore. We should hold our other men accountable. We should talk to our young boys and say, this is not okay. You don't treat women like this. And, and you know, another thing, we need to talk about our children. You know, a lot of our children have been abused in some cases it's been in a, and they don't like to really talk about it in a, a church an atmosphere where we've seen priests abuse children for years. We haven't held, held them accountable. The churches have not held them accountable, but we have to talk about it. And the quickest way to do it is standing up, speaking out every chance we get. We don't like to talk about the subject. And if you think about it, you know, we'll, we'll talk about all types of other subjects, but when it comes to this subject, we don't like to talk about it. It's an uncomfortable subject, but we have to get comfortable having uncomfortable conversations with everyone. What I've seen is I've seen um, some men that are raised uh, without a father, they're, they're just fine. And then there's others that grow up without fathers and maybe they're seeing their, their mother or female in their life being abused and think that this is okay. And it's not. And that's why I say we have to, as men, any chance that we get, speak about this subject and saying it's not okay. One of the things that we really need to do, we need to hold our artists accountable. Our artists in music that proliferate that it's okay to do this stuff. We need to hold our directors and storytellers of uh, movies and things like that accountable to showing that, that this is not okay because it's been glorified for years. One of my favorite movies growing up was The Three Musketeers. Absolutely loved it. Um, I watched it probably a few years ago and there was a place in the movie where they were sitting in the bar and they grabbed the woman and just yanking her and pulling her all over the place and using the word winch. And I'm sitting here, I'm like, that's abuse. As a child, I didn't think, I'm just watching the movie. As a teenager, I'm just watching the movie. And I got an adult and I started getting into this space about generation. I'm like, wow. Look how they're treating this woman. We need to stop portraying things like this. Men, we, need, we really just need to be a champion of this issue and really support our women, protect our women and our children. All the men out there, I have a challenge for you. And the challenge is to be a champion for women and our children. To be a champion to stomp out gender-based violence. I don't care what title that you hold, your social economical background, you too can be a champion to stop gender-based violence across the globe. We need you and we need you right now to take a stand.